and give a little second there so you can join me. Um, I hope you're all doing well out there this Thursday. I've got to give you a second. It just takes a little minute for things to get going. Hey Deirdre, how are you? I was just giving a little sec there for people to catch up. Hey Liz, Michelle, I'm seeing lots of people appearing. Nice to see you all. We've got Thursday again. It's like, it's like, you could just mark the calendar in it. What you don't see and what you need not be aware of is my husband has got this special, special knack that at almost bang on 2.30 every Thursday, he tries calling me on my phone. It's reached the point where it's become a running joke at this point where he's like, okay, what time do I need to call you today again? Um, so yeah, but fortunately he may remember today. Um, you're loving the Galway. Oh, good, good, good. Are you all ready to hear lots about the Galway Blanket Club today? We've been slowly dropping hints over the last few weeks, starting from my trip up to Galway to visit the actual farm itself. And then we shared a little bit about the project, but not the actual, um, but not the actual what we were making yet. But yesterday we did. Now, as we're immersed in something like this, a new project, I'm because I'm thinking about it all the time and all the different moving parts. Sometimes I end up forgetting to tell you particular details. So. As I'm going through, if there's something that I'm leaving out or something you'd really like to know that is not going to be secret, just ask me and I'll pop it up there. Um, I'll share what I can. Um, I don't know, like in terms of the Galway wool, I'm being introduced with to this year. So a lot of it is, is new to me as well. But in terms of the project, I can probably do it, give you a pretty good shot at answering most of that. Uh, Lisa, you were like my sweater. Thank you. This one, I haven't pulled it out in a while. It's Estorella from short row knits um i it feels like a lifetime ago it was actually 2015 that was published now um so it's just a it's a hardback and a digital book that was done with a publisher so i can't publish the individual patterns but there is it's in it's in the book itself um let me make sure i haven't hey good morning um everyone i'd like seeing all your faces here so you probably have spotted what we're doing um, and we have, we've got one, is there going to be cables in the blanket? There will indeed. So we started with the trip to Galway. Um, Galway wool, I had not come across before um, or hadn't really worked with it very much or didn't realize what an important part culturally it actually was for us. That it is, it is now the only remaining native Irish breed and it is when you think of, um, I suppose, my more iconic Aran sweaters and cable sweaters in that really, really um, light, buttery, creamy color, the most of those traditional ones would have been made with Galway wool. Um, oh, I'm frozen for someone. Hopefully it'll catch up again in a second there. Um, were made with Galway wool because it is, it's a very, very light colored wool. Unlike a lot of, like when you've got mixed breeds and other ones coming in, it tends to, um, oh, it's frozen for some people here. Let me stop for a second and I will just see if I can restart. All right, people, I'm going to slowly start there. You can let me know, has it actually started back again? I've changed from Wi-Fi to 5G, so hopefully that should do a better job. So it sounds like it's probably back for people there. Um, I might start again in relation to the Galway sheep. I was just talking about the fact that Galway sheep were kind of new to me. I did not realize what an integral part um, of the um, of the actual Irish traditional color sheep and the and the Aran sweater and all that it was. Anyone who's talk, heard me talk about Aran sweaters before will know that Aran sweaters they they are they are a thing, but it's a fairly recent development. As in recent is in about a hundred years ago. And a lot of it was actually, they were brought into the Aran Islands knitters in order to be able to actually help the knitters there learn how to do it and to actually create um, a local um, a local business that the women could actually help to support the economy there. So, so the actual, the whole thing of cables having particular family ties that or being able to recognize fishermen who've drowned and things like that, that part does not exist. However, a lot of the families that would have learned or the women and the knitters who would have actually learned it, 
the, the sweaters that they are, are knitting with, or sorry, the sweaters that they're actually making in the cable patterns, they would have actually been developing them themselves over the years. They would have also been showing their children and so that they would have taken a lot of ownership of those. But it's not something that goes back for 100 years. It's actually a relatively recent phenomena, um, the whole, um, the idea of, of, of Aaron knitting, recent being 100 years, relative, which is fairly recent if you think something is hundreds and hundreds of, uh, of years old. Carol, yes, fairies are totally real. Yep, for sure, no doubt about that. But the reason I'm talking about the Aran sweater is that when we think of it, it's usually that creamy, let me pull it up, it's usually this really creamy, buttery colour is what you're talking about it. And in Ireland, they'd actually call this um, bonine, bon being white, een a little bit white, so a creamy colour. So they'd often be known as bonine sweaters. And this one was new to me, is that Galway would often have been the more traditional um, choice for when they were actually working with it because you can see it is this is undyed and it's a light creamy color a part of that is because the actual fleece is so thick i've got some i've got some here she gave me a big wad of fleece and what's really interesting is you see the different colors you've actually got different colors fleece as you're going in and the lighter one when she pulled it apart the lighter part that was in next to the sheep was a much much lighter cream color they've got a very very thick coat so it means that there's actually an awful lot to work with when they're when they're working with the sheep um, and something else i don't think about with sheep is you think of something as it is a breed and it's a particular type of fleece but breeds can, are continually being changed that you actually you breed or you, and you pick characteristics that you want to move them in a certain direction if you want a particular type of meat, you'll pick a particular a type of breed and move in that direction. If you're looking for softer or nicer fleeces, you have to breed for that. You actually have to encourage those particular characteristics. So that's actually why this project is particularly important because up to this, anybody who's been breeding Galway sheep or any sheep in Ireland, the wool itself has been very undervalued. And what that means is that often the cost of shearing the fleece will not even get covered by how much they get paid for the fleece. But the Galway Wool Co-op are actually bucking the trend and they have, they're getting a realistic amount of money for the fleeces, which makes it worth their while to breed specifically for the wool and to actually start to, and to have Galway wools that they keep it, they ring fence it and it's been collected by the Galway Wool Co-op and it's then been washed and scoured and sent over, sent up to Donegal who are buying the entire clip at the last couple of years and spinning it and preserving it as Galway wool. It is the only project I know of similar to this with any breed in Ireland because it's quite difficult with the amount of steps that you have to go through to, to preserve the integrity of the actual wool. And that's where we come in because they've gone to all of this trouble between the farm, you know, the actual gathering the farmers, encouraging them to breed the Galway breed in order to actually develop a really nice wool for us to work with. And then the, the, the mill has really wanted to be involved in it because they love the idea and really, really want to encourage the breeding and the, and the actual and having fleeces from Ireland. But we need to knit with it. And that's where we came in because we're like, we want to encourage it too. We want to be part of the whole process. So we put the project together to really shine a spotlight on this Galway wool, the importance to the whole system and how it works through. And so it ends up becoming just an entire celebration really from everything from start to finish. And we're capping it all off with a charity project as well. So there's going to be the project that we're doing we're going to have five euros for every kit that's sold is going to get donated to Jigsaw, which is a youth mental health charity in Ireland. Um, as with a lot of countries, youth mental health, which is, it needs to be very fast acting and it needs to be very early intervention. And a lot of things can be headed off if you can get somebody help quickly. The system in Ireland is very slow, the public system. So this actually means that they can get more funds to do something really important with. Donegal Yarns are also going to be donating for it. And the finished club blanket, 
we're actually going to raffle it off and all of the, the proceeds is going to, are going to go into um, the charity as well. So we've got a, a, a triple charity donation is the best way of putting it um, for the full project. So I, I'm, I actually can I even begin to tell you how excited we all are about this entire project. There's just there's so many things that we've been thinking about for a long time that have all come together in this is the best way to put it. So that's kind of the, the overall different building blocks. So now what you probably want to know is a little bit about the project and how it all fits together. So tomorrow night is when it goes live, eight o'clock tomorrow night on StolenStitches.com. A little bit like our other clubs in that um, you have a single purchase, but this time round there'll be one delivery. So all of the yarn will come in one delivery. There'll be a tote bag. We're putting a little booklet together with um, just a nice little bit of information about the project, about the sheep and just, yeah, information and pretty pictures, things like that. Um, there's three of us designing the project. There's myself, there's Laura Perham and there's Emer Early. So we're all going to take for, you know, Laura just pointed up, it's 8 p.m. Irish time. So if you're in the US, the East Coast is five hours earlier and kind of backtrack before that. So yeah, very good point, it's Irish time. So there will be 12 different blanket squares in total that we're going to design, four of us each. And it'll be a mix between, there's definitely going to be cables in this because hang on, these are not the end projects, but these are a, kind of a couple of little swatches that I've been kind of just working on with the Galway wool. Oh. And as you can probably see, it really does work extremely well with cables. They just really pop out. Um, when you've got the cables. We've got a few of them that will be various different texture stitches because I think in a blanket it's nice to have a little mixture so if you want to take a particular square around and you don't want to have to concentrate on it having ones that are texture stitches works pretty well. There'll be two sizes. You'll have a lap size blanket also I suppose baby size blanket I suppose um, that would be um, that would have 12 squares so it'll be one of each of them there will be and there'll also be a throw size which will have 20. So there will be just 12 different ones but you can double up or you may opt to pick one to put on the outer or one in the middle. We'll kind of talk a lot about different ways you can combine them and you may have a favorite square and you may do more of that one or you might decide I actually hate this square I want to go do more. So you, you can all you can play around and that will actually be a big part of the project. Elsa Louise what will the difficulty level be with? Um, it's going to, if you've been on the Celtic Knits Club before, it's going to probably be similar. There will be cables, but because there, there's no increases or decreases, it's just, a, you know, they're 10 by 10 inch squares. So there should be, I think it should be manageable for more, uh, for, for most people, like intermediate, or even if you're an adventurous beginner and you want to learn how to work through cables, you can do that. You can also opt if there's some of the squares you feel are beyond you perhaps you will substitute in some of the other ones. So there should be a good mix in terms of being able to, um, and of terms of being able to combine them together. Um, and then when we finish off, we'll obviously we'll be joining it together and we'll talk about how the whole thing um, fits together. Deirdre, how rough is the yarn? Not next to the skin, you know, but how rough? That's probably gonna depend on your own personal comfort levels. It's, um, once it, it's very different once you actually wash it. I find it quite pleasant. When I'm knitting through with it with cables, it can be feel a little rough. With texture stitches and things like that, it's okay. Um, I found working on metal needles a little bit easier. Um, for a blanket, I find it extremely comfortable for a blanket. Um, but I think that in terms of comfort level of working with it, that is going to be very, very dependent on the individual. Because I, I know there's certain things that I have picked up and thought they were very pleasant and someone else says, I'm not going anywhere near that. If you use Blasta, it's probably a little bit rougher than Blasta because Blasta is mixed with 40% of New Zealand fleece. So I'd say it's it's a little it's a little rougher than Blasta, but not terribly so. I don't that's not really a great answer, but <laughs> um oh, I'm looking through here. Um how, how else Louise, I actually answered it as I was talking. I, I was saying, I think that it's probably going to be, it's not going to be, it's, I think Blast is a softer yarn than this is, um, is the answer. But as with all of them that are woolen spun, 
they bloom and they do change quite considerably as you're working with them. I've known actually for some people if they like the yarn but they find it harder to work with they'll actually even um, pre-wash, open the skeins up, soak them. I've known people to you kind of add lanolin, add conditioners, things like that as well um, and pre-working with them. Um, Monica, is it all one color or is it the natural fleece? It's all going to be just the one color in the natural fleece. For the moment, they're not dying with it. I think they kind of want to really lean into the to the actual original color um, and it's probably going to be a little bit down the line before there's going to be uh, dyed versions of it offered. Um, how can you join? Um, tomorrow night, eight o'clock Irish time, it will go live and it'll be on our website, stonestitches.com. So keep an eye out for it tomorrow night is when it goes. We also, a bit like, um, hang on one second, let me grab this. Um, a little bit like the other clubs, there will obviously be a workshop component to this. All of the workshops will be available when each of the clues come out, kind of talking through the actual charts or the stitch patterns and how you can um, yeah, and, and how to work with it. Tips on how to work with charts and keep track of it and things. Um, so the other thing, sorry, I'm looking at you, Deirdre. Um, you've got you've got problem hands. <laughs> oh, I know. I knew what you mean. I, I, uh, I recognize what you were talking about, Deirdre. Uh, this is the label for it, which, of course, is completely backwards. But what it's called is Golov, which is the Irish for Galway. And let me open this up here. And you may be able to see here as well. See this kind of a shadow in the background behind it. And that is in fact an outline of the map of Galway. Because while Galway is the name of a sheep breed, it's also a county and a, um, it's, it's also a county in Ireland on the west coast of Ireland. So that's where the actual shape of the Galov came from. Um, charts are written as well. Oh, always written. <laughs> I never, ever, ever only do charts. It's just particularly when I'm doing videos, I will be talking through the charts so that people um, kind of can get an, an idea of how it fits together and it's much more visual so it works well for talking through in videos. But all of the written directions will be there also. Um, thank you very much for the free Valentine's Day workshop. You're very welcome. I hope you all had a good Valentine's Day and you actually enjoyed the workshop. It was, I really, really enjoyed watching all of the lovely notes and messages you all sent in it was it was really really nice so i pre i felt like there was as much love being thrown back at us as we were given out to you so very much appreciate that um and i should tell you as well if you want to read a little bit more i'm not read here a little bit more about the project from when i went up to galway to the um to the farm to visit the galway wool co-op we took a couple of, we did an interview and had a series of questions and I've just posted up on YouTube now a vlog, a kind of a more involved blog, vlog where I talk about the project and then my interview with Blonid um, has been posted out and then at the end just kind of giving more details on the project again. And we've also just popped up a blog post on carolfeller.com that has got all of the details and also has the video in, or the vlog embedded into it. So if you want to kind of um, have a little bit um, of talk around, you know, you kind of get an idea of it. Carol, I hope my, my American husband uh, gave me a good Valentine's Day. Well, our Valentine's Day was a bit strange because one of our kids ended up in hospital. It was fine now, he's out. But most of ours were like tracking in and now dropping things at the hospital. So. Yeah, that was Valentine's Day. So maybe we'll do a Valentine's Day this weekend. Um, is it limited kits? Um, yes, it is limited kits, but we've we've put in a fairly generous order. So I would hope that it would cover um, most of the demand. Um, but it is limited because as with as always with Galway, uh, not Galway, with Donegal yarns, the lead times are quite long. So we have to preempt how much we think is going to be interested. So by its very nature, unfortunately, it will be limited. <laughs> um, uh, oh, thank you. I'm, I'm just, what I'm reading up here is um, that you enjoy the gift. And it is a good distraction during a snowstorm, for sure. You get to sit down and actually uh, work your way through some videos and get totally distracted. 
what is the weight of the yarn? The yarn weight would be a DK weight yarn, so lighter than an iron weight, so it's kind of warm but not terribly um, heavy. Can I tell you the cost? Yes, the two cost price would be, uh, like obviously it's, it's all inclusive. For the small one, the lap blanket is 85 euros, which would include the videos and the lives and all the patterns and, and the yarn, obviously. There would be shipping internationally on top of that um, because it's below the free shipping limit. Then the larger throw size, which would have um, which would have 20 squares, that's 120, and that just tips it into free shipping for most most international destinations. Um, you hang on a second, Kathy. I'm not sure what you were um, asking there. You were saying clues per square. Um, um, yeah, the, each each clue or each installment will have three um, will have three squares coming out, and we'll do that four times two weeks apart. So you'll end up with twelve, but in um, three squares every two weeks. The club it's going to ship the twenty third of May, and then oh, so, beg your pardon. First clue comes out the twenty third of May. It will ship at the beginning of May because we're due to get the yarn in at the end of April on the current schedule. So then at the very beginning, um, so then at the very beginning of May we can ship it out. First clue comes out twenty third of May, and then every two, uh, with three blanket squares in that. Two weeks later there will be another three blanket squares. And then it'll happen a couple of more times so that you will end up with the 12 squares um, patterns and videos by the time you're done. Um, it is. It ended up being a, um, a fairly intensive project in terms of videos because I'm like, oh, we're just doing squares. But of course, because each one is an entirely separate pattern, um, it's it's been fairly involved. So you get a lot of video content for, um, for the project. <laughs> so... There should be plenty of support if you're newer to cables or you want to learn something new. I um, think that probably has answered most of the questions that are popping up. Um, so I might start winding down. If there's anything else that comes up that isn't answered here, pop it into the comments afterwards because I'm going to repost this afterwards to just go into to go up on the grid. Um, Nicola, your birthday is in May, so it could be your birthday present. Oh, you're totally right. You get in early, get your present all sorted. So it'll be then arriving on your door very thoughtfully, just in time for your birthday. <laughs> I think that's an excellent idea. But yeah, just tomorrow night, eight o'clock and I will, yeah, I'll have them all up for you then. So bye.